There are lots of things I like about the underground, but one of them is this sound. That's the sound of a tube train whistle. Yes, unlike most trains in the UK, tube trains sound a whistle. Something I've often wondered is, why? The basic concept of a whistle on a train is a very old one. In the early days of the railways, a whistle was necessary to alert people and animals to this weird thing that probably wouldn't be able to stop in time if they got in its way. Sometimes bells were used, but a whistle was louder and drew its power from the locomotive's boiler. As time went on, the railways got more sophisticated and trains got faster, whistles took on many other uses. As well as shooing cows off the line, they could alert people well in advance that a train was coming. Signalmen could set the points accordingly, workers in the tunnels would know to get off to the side, workers in depots and sheds would know that the train was about to move. There were simple whistle codes to enable the engine to communicate with the guard's van. For instance, three short blasts indicated danger and that the brakes needed to be applied. These days there are more sophisticated means of communication. And of course, steam engines are now the preserve of museums and heritage railways in Britain. That being said, there's still a need to alert people to oncoming trains, arguably more so as diesel and electric trains are a lot quieter and don't announce their presence with a cloud of smoke and steam. Diesel and electric trains and locomotives are usually fitted with a horn powered by compressed air. Did I ever tell you about my great uncle Mike? He worked at Crew Works and managed to liberate a diesel locomotive horn for his car. Apparently it scared the pants off everyone when he sounded it. This raises a point, which is that a horn is a very loud thing indeed. In an enclosed space it can be pretty deafening. I've spoken before about how tube tunnels tend to echo because there's nowhere else for the sound to go which means that sounds that would normally be fairly tolerable can be deafening to passengers. Well, if you sounded a horn in the tunnel, there's a solid chance you'd be causing hearing damage to everyone in the vicinity. Not what you want in a situation where everyone needs to be on the alert. And so we come back to the good old whistle. The whistle on a tube train is also powered by compressed air. Of course, tube trains have plenty of that on hand to operate the doors. The sound carries well, but it won't cause undue distress to crew or passengers. The whistle is sounded for various reasons. They're used for obvious safety reasons around a depot, where trains may move unexpectedly and as a matter of course people are on the track. So they sound when a train moves or when it leaves the depot. They are sounded when a train passes a whistle board like this one at Stamford Brook. Those exist in areas where there is likely to be reduced visibility, such as on sharp curves. Similarly, when a train leaves a tunnel, the whistle is blown to let anyone in the vicinity know that, hey, remember how there wasn't a train here a moment ago? Well, there is one now. In a station, it might be sounded to get the attention of staff. In theory, the whistle is supposed to be sounded whenever a train leaves a station. But in practice, this doesn't seem to happen that often. Or maybe I've just been extraordinarily unlucky. There are still whistle codes. Two blasts to call to signalling staff, four blasts to call for a technician. There are regulations surrounding the hours in which whistles can be used. Whistle signs are to be ignored between the hours of 7pm and 7am. Which makes me wonder, why do those signs exist in the first place if they can be ignored without consequence? Let me know in the comments section if you know the answer, thanking you in advance. Whistles in other areas are limited to between 11pm and 7am. Even the newest tube trains are fitted with a whistle, and it's a curiously retro feature on what is, on the whole, a very modern network. Well, I hope you enjoyed this melodious tale from the tube. If you did, please do leave a like and consider subscribing for more. I'd like to thank my donors on Ko-fi and Patreon and here on YouTube for your generous support. You are the compressed air to my whistle. And I'll see you all again very soon for another tale from the tube.